the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So I'm directing this largely to the children, but if you feel compelled to answer and raise your hand, go ahead and do so. But I have a question. So how do you know at home when your mom or your dad serves spaghetti that you don't eat with your fingers? How do you know? Does anybody? How do you know? How do you know you're not supposed to just dig in and start in a common sense? That helps a lot. That helps a lot. Because you've had it before and you know how to eat it. So our history, that's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. Now, how many times do you have to try that before you catch on? Like a hundred? Six thousand times. You've taken your hands and you've gone into the spaghetti. All right. Uh, now, how do you know not to pick on your brother or sister? How do you know that? Do you always pick on your brother or sister if you have a brother or sister? Because it's not nice. Because it's not nice. You don't know. When you're born, do you know all these things? No. But how do you learn them? With the virtues? Absolutely, with the virtues. But you have rules around your house? Do your mom and dad have to tell you the same thing again and again and again? Sometimes they do. I know that. Sometimes they have to tell you again and again. Uh, making your bed, cleaning your, your room, taking the trash out. Some of those rules have to be repeated again and again and again, don't they? But not to eat spaghetti with... with uh, with your hands, that's one they usually tell you maybe once or twice once you, you know, when you're a baby, uh, after you've grown up. Because uh, you learn the rules that you eat with manners, right? All right? And you don't pick on your brother or sister because uh, you're taught that one of the rules is that we take care of one another and we treat each other kindly, right? What about when you get to school? How do you know you're not supposed to eat glue? <laughs> All right, James, you already got one. How do you know you're not supposed to eat glue? Because it, it tastes good, some, it tastes bad. Sometimes we discover that things are just not a good idea because when we try them, uh, much like eating spaghetti with our hands, um, that it's just not a good thing. But how do we know um, that we're supposed to get our workout and put it on our desk and put our backpacks up uh, and put our lunch someplace and sit quietly and wait for the next thing? How do we know that at school? Are we just that brilliant that we just woke up from the first day we got to kindergarten and we knew all the rules? Rules, absolutely. Do you guys have class rules? All right, what are your class rules? Fifth grade, what are the class rules in fifth grade? Don't talk out loud over Miss Nesbitt. Good rule. What other rules do you have in fifth grade? Be good so you can get lifesavers. What other rules do you have in fifth grade? In fifth grade? Do you, do you have a no biting rule in fifth grade? You don't have a no biting rule? What about no pulling hair? Do you have a no pulling hair rule? Well, why don't you have rules like that? Because it's too obvious, but do you have an arch overarching rule? Do you have a big rule that covers all that kind of stuff? The golden rule, is that one of your rules in fifth grade? What's the golden rule? And yep, and showing respect. Treat others how you'd like to be treated. And show so, so you don't need a rule about pulling hair and no biting, right? Because you have a rule about respect. Uh, but that's how we learn, is we start with simple rules. When we're in preschool, we do have rules like uh, no biting and no, pull, and no pulling hair uh, and no grabbing toys out of someone else's hands. We have to start with rules like that, right? And then we get to uh, what's behind those rules, and that's that we treat each other well, right? And the virtues help us get behind those rules. you know how many rules uh, were in the Bible uh, during Moses' time when he got all the rules? you know how many rules there were? There's, there's the Ten Commandments, and then there's, uh, there's more than that, though. Fifty. More than that? A hundred more than that? Anybody up here? How many rules do you think? Three hundred? More than that? Five hundred? We're getting close. What's that? Never ending. Never ending? It does end. <laughs> Much like this sermon, it will end eventually. It's, it's, it's 1,613 rules. 613 rules uh, that were about keeping people safe, because that's one of the reasons we have rules, right? Uh, to keep people safe, uh, to help us take care of one another, right? 
uh, and to help us know who God is and help us follow God. So those were kind of uh, what, uh, you know, the Ten Commandments and all the other rules were about how do we know who God is and how do we love and, and, uh, um, and, and make time for God to say thank you to God uh, and honor God. How do we take care of one another and how do we keep each other safe? That was kind of what most of the rules were about. Um, but guess what? Jesus came and he said, those rules are very important. Don't throw out those rules. But you know what? There's something really important behind those rules. Uh, and it's, that is what I need you to hold on to. So what rules do we have when we're driving our cars? Because I know you guys all drive your cars. When you're driving on the cars, how do you know how fast to go? They're signs. And what do they usually say? Speed, speed limit. And what's it? 35, something like that? OK. You're driving a fire truck, and you're on your way to a fire. Do you slow down to make sure you're following that? No. Why? Why? Because the rule, 35 miles an hour, is to keep people safe, right? But what's the role of the fireman? Why does he need to get to the, the, uh, to the, to the fire really quickly, right? Because it's an emergency. In order to save people, right? Is that what you're going to say? In order to get there and save people, he has to do it? So that's what Jesus is talking about today, is that rules are very important, because rules help us learn how to take care of one another before we're old enough to know all those things. Uh, we need rules so that we don't pull hair, even though eventually we learn that we just are supposed to uh, love and respect one another. Uh, but we have to learn that the long way. And it takes a long time to get to rules like you have in fifth grade. Um, but the same is true with God and God's people. They had to have 613 rules until Jesus came and said, you know what? The heart of all 613 rules is to love your God with all your heart, all your mind and all your soul and love your neighbor as yourself. And so in this story that we have today, and now I'm at the story, uh, we had Jesus teaching in a synagogue, um, which was like the, the, what, what church was uh, way back then uh, in Jesus' time. Uh, for all of the people of Israel, they would gather in a synagogue to worship. Uh, and this person comes in who really isn't supposed to be there uh, because, um, because he's sick. And at that time, uh, in order to keep everybody else uh, from getting sick, they kept the sick people outside. Is that, do you think, what Jesus would want? No, because, you know, God wants all of God's children to be able to come and be with God and be with God's people. So, one, he invites them into the synagogue when he comes there. Uh, and, two, one of the biggest rules so that we make time for God is that we keep the Sabbath. That means that we set aside a day uh, where we don't work and we don't uh, do any kind of work and we spend the time saying thank you to God, just taking a deep breath, realizing the wonderful world God made for us, worshiping God, and just having a day that's just set apart for God and for us to rest, because that's good for us. And you know what Jesus does on that day that he's supposed to be resting and not doing any work? What do you think he does? He prays, he does pray, uh, and we're allowed, that's one of the things that we can do on, on the Sabbath is pray, but what else does he do? He does work. What kind of work does he do in the story? Did you guys hear what, what he did in the story? He washes feet, uh, he does do that, uh, but in the story, he heals a man who's sick. Uh, and they look at him and they say, you did work on the Sabbath, you're not supposed to do that. But what's more important than following the law exactly? saving people and getting behind the law to what's really important. Uh, that poor person was sick, and he wanted to come to church and be with, uh, be with his, his church family, and he couldn't. And he wanted to be uh, free from, uh, from his sickness. And so Jesus said, it's more important, and this is what you need to know about God, that it's more important to God that this person be healed and that this person uh, be able to know that they are a beloved child of God than it is that we follow the 613 laws. But those laws are still important. So one of the things I hope you learn during your time at St. James is that rules are important, but they help us get beyond the rule to a God who loves us more than anything and who wants us to love God with all our heart, mind, and soul and to love one another the way that we love ourselves. So all that work that we do, all of those virtues and all those building blocks from the time you're in preschool all the way through fifth grade for the rest of your life, help you live into those 613 laws and so that we can live a life that loves our God and honors our God with all our heart, mind, and soul and our neighbor as ourselves. Can you say amen with me? Amen. amen.